one of the most beautiful blessings that the scripture has told us that we can have. In Matthew 5 and 6, it says, Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. That is a promise from the Lord Jesus Christ. I mean, blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Now, think about this. The promise of being filled. Imagine, you have people that hunger and thirst right now. Women all over Facebook. Men all over Facebook, all over the world, hunger and thirst with that pain, that gnawing inside for a relationship, someone to love them, to be with them, sometimes someone just to have sex with them, that they can enjoy sexual rendezvous with somebody when they want to. Some people hunger and thirst for fame, for fortune. To be recognized, to be to be acknowledged as somebody important. Hunger and thirst for money so that I can have everything that I want when I want it. Work two and three jobs. Sometimes I have no time for the word of God. Jesus, the magnificent Christ, says, Blessed are the people that hunger. Got that, got that gnawing inside you. Hunger and thirst after righteousness. One of the things that you see is you hunger every day. If you're normal, you thirst every day. It's a necessity for our physical bodies to live. And he said, if you hunger and thirst after righteousness, you will be filled. It's an ongoing thing. You will continually be being filled. So what does that mean? How is that enacted? Do you hunger and thirst to know him? Do you hunger and thirst to to be fed by him. Let's look at a couple of things in the Bible before we go any further. I want you to look at what hungering and thirsting for righteousness would be. Now, when I was a child, I thought hunger and thirsting for righteousness just meant reading and learning the word. It will not exclude that. But I want you to see in a world where right now somebody's probably being raped. Some child is probably being left at home because of what we call Saturday night, which which is really uh, Friday night, Saturday morning, left at home without protection. Somebody's probably being molested. Somebody may be trying to come across the United States and their children are going to be sold or they're going to be sold. There's somebody right now probably being cut where people are drinking their blood, doing satanic sacrifices. There are people right now that go to churches where the preachers are laying up with them, taking advantage of them, taking their money, selling books that don't even, not even worth being read. Somebody right now have lost their job and shouldn't have lost it. Somebody's going through the pain of cancer. Cancer, going through chemo, going through radiation. Right now, there's somebody that have cancer because somebody did something that shouldn't have been done. I've talked to a man this week that's affected by Agent Orange. Okay? And so we got wickedness all over the world where you got people going to school teaching your children to disrespect you. How do you hunger and thirst for righteousness? You're hungering and thirsting for justice. You're hungering and thirsting for peace. You're hungering and thirsting for the Lord's kingdom to take over this world. Let me show you how those people are blessed for that. In the book of Ezekiel. Three verses in the book of Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 9, verse 4. The background and the backdrop of this, in short, is God was getting ready to destroy Jerusalem because they had not hungered and thirst for righteousness. They had hungered and thirst for everything else. Fame, fortune, money, power. They even enslaved their own people. And then God's spirit had left the area. You can read the whole chapter and see that I'm telling you the truth. But there was a certain group of people that were going to be spared. There's a certain group of people that were going to be blessed. Listen to the verse. Ezekiel 9 verse 4. And Yahweh said unto him, Ezekiel, well not really, he's saying it through Ezekiel to the man with the ink horn. The ink horn is going to mark the people that's going to be spared, okay? And Yahweh said unto him, go through the midst of the city, the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh 
groan, okay, and cry, groan, lament for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. Do you sigh? Do you groan when people are being slaughtered? Do you sigh and groan when politicians lie? Do you sigh and groan when people that are black just hate somebody because they're white? Do you sigh and groan because somebody white think that you are wrong whenever you say your families and your ancestors have been done wrong and you have benefited from it and we haven't? Justice, do you sigh and groan when a policeman is killed when he shouldn't have been, when he was doing righteously? Do you cry and sigh and groan when an officer abuses his authority? Do you sigh and groan when the preachers that are supposed to be carrying God's word make merchandise of people, have sex with the boys and girls and the women, and get on TV and act a fool? Do you sigh and groan when you know people are sitting under that looking for God? It was worse than that in Jerusalem. <laughs> okay. It says, Mark the foreheads of the men that sigh and cry for all the abomination that be done in the midst thereof. And to the others, he said, there are other ones there that's going to do the killing. He said, go after him through the city and smite. Let not your eyes spare, neither have pity. These are not humans that's doing the smiting. These are celestial beings. Slay utterly the old and young, both the maid and the children and the women but come not near any man upon whom the mark is and begin at my sanctuary then begin at the ancient men which were before the house what is he saying here I'm going to execute my judgment because they would not repent therefore in order for me to bring justice in order for me to turn things around start Killing off the old men, men that should have been examples of righteousness, the elderly men that should have been teaching, that should have lived a certain way, kill the women that go along and benefit from it, kill the children that would grow up and be the same way that they were. Listen to what it says, smite to the others in my hearing, verse 5, go after him and in the city, smite, let not your eyes spare, neither have pity, slay utterly the old men, they don't sigh, they don't mourn, the young and the maids, they're not sighing, they're not mourning, they're not hungry for righteousness to be done. And the children and the women, but those that have the mark, those that have hungered, and thirsted and been disgusted with the state of affairs in their city and in their country. Spare them. I want you to see that he said, blessed are they which do hunger and thirst. After that, they shall be filled. They will be blessed. He said they will be blessed. I want you to see when it comes to us, Yes, we should feel the same way. We should sigh and mourn and ask God to cause people to repent. But ultimately, he's got to judge because he's righteous. Listen to me. When we go to 1 Peter, one that was there when the Lord was saying this, in his general epistle, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 1 and verse 2, listen to how he teaches us to be blessed. He says, wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and all hypocrisies and envies and evil speakings, which is slander, okay? What he wants you to do is lay aside our own evilness, our own vengefulness, lay aside deceit. God, let's be men of truth. We seek in righteousness. We can't be of truth, being deceitful, doing things, beating people out of money, laying up with women, telling them we love them, going against God, doing all kind of ungodliness that we do, telling people they are right with God when they're not so they're like us. In all hypocrisies, pretending to be righteous when you're not. 
Pretending to be in love with somebody when you're not. Pretending to be fair when you're not. Pretending to be impartial when you're not. Pretending that you love everybody when you don't. All hypocrisies. Pretending to love his word when you don't even read. You don't read God's word. You are a hypocrite. If you don't know him, you can't love him. He said, if a man love me, he will keep my word. And 1 John 5 and 3 is this is the love of God that we keep his commandment. Quit being a hypocrite. He says in all envies, in all evil speakings, let's quit slandering people and let's start praying for them. You don't like them? Let's really learn to pray for them. Let's ask God to make us love one another. Let's hunger and thirst for righteousness. But then he said, do that as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. When I see babies being born, they got that universal sound. <laughs> Till they get that pacifier. And that lasts for a second. And then they spit it out. And they want the breast or the bottle. Nothing will satisfy them but the milk. Nothing should satisfy us but God's word. That's why Jesus taught explicitly, man shall not live by bread alone. When he uses the picture of hunger and thirst, he's talking about food. He's talking about water. But when he says for righteousness, he brings it to another level. If you want righteousness, hunger and thirst after his word, Let's move aside from evilness. Let's despise it in our land. And let's find not only fault with it, but let's be the kind of people that mourn, mourn, sigh, cry, and ask God to vindicate the, the ones that are afflicted that's being treated with injustices and to strengthen those that are being subjugated by it. That we long for righteousness. He said we'd be filled. He said we'd be filled. Let's believe him. Amen. Amen and amen. I wish you much grace and peace. Let's hunger and thirst after righteousness. Let's do that.